we brought in our wonderful patient, Deb, all the way from uh, Columbus, Ohio. So Deb, thank you for coming, uh, taking time out of your schedule and, and being with us. Uh, Deb's been a fantastic patient. Um, she's a uh, very healthy patient who has a non-contributory medical history. Uh, she was unfortunate uh, in the fact that she was congenitally missing tooth number 20. Um, Deb actually presented to my practice uh, recently with a retained primary tooth that was uh, failing. And uh, at that point, it was determined that uh, the tooth needed to come out. She was having some symptoms associated with that tooth. And uh, that was about four and a half weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, what we ended up doing was doing a traumatic extraction and doing... Um, uh, uh, a bone augmentation at that time and uh, here we are today for a demonstration of one of many options that we do have for Deb. Um, certainly back at the office we could have fabricated a scanning appliance and that's called a classic guide approach. We could have also scanned Deb using a CEREC, meaning a full arch optical impression, and then taken a cone beam scan, planned our implant, and uploaded that data to Germany to create a Opti guide, which is a milled guide, which is the second option that Serona has for us. Um, but what you know, what we figured while we're here at the Scottsdale Center, uh, at the Spear Education Center, um, we figured we might as well show you the third option, which is the Seric guide, the newest addition to the family uh, in terms of guided surgery for Serona. And so we're going to take you through the steps and the protocol. But I want you to kind of pretend that this is Deb's first time. Um, she's here today for an implant consultation. And you'll certainly evaluate the protocol that I'm going to be showcasing today and determine how you would use it in your clinic. We have some clinicians who are using this as a definitive method of fabricating surgical guides in their offices, primarily because they control everything from start to finish. They can also do it in one visit. And certainly, uh, perhaps the most important, is they can reduce the cost. What we'd like to do is, is kind of take you through the start to finish. And this first segment, what I've done is I've evaluated Deb and her situation for tooth number 20. And if you can imagine having retained a primary tooth K at the site of tooth number 20, the mesiodistal space for that tooth is rather large for the definitive adult tooth number 20. So, you know, based on the model and based on our clinical assessment, certainly we're placing implant number 20. But because of that mesiodistal discrepancy from the pediatric tooth to the adult tooth, the final restoration for site number 20 will have the dimension of a molar tooth. And so um, orthodontics could have been an option. Deb, would you have gone for braces? Oh, probably. Maybe. I, Maybe. I did it 30 when I was in my 30s. In your 30s. So, you know, we can certainly do ideal dentistry and shift everything to close that space, but her occlusion is dialed in. She's class one, uh, molar and canine relationship. So it would have been an orthodontic challenge to consider, but um, at this stage, what we're opting to do is place implant number 20, and then we'll restore her with the appropriate size tooth that's in full occlusion um, and maximum intercuspation. So what we've done is we've actually taken an optical impression on Deb. Uh, my team has also uh, taken an impression on Deb as well, because the CEREC guide process, there's a couple workflows. You can make the CEREC guide intraorally, or you can do it on a model. I encourage the end users to actually consider doing it on a model because you certainly have much more control. The material that we're going to be using is a little bit challenging to use intraorally, but it certainly can be done. Um, but you'll see what uh, um, I'm talking about as soon as we show you the CEREC uh, design process. So now that we've captured an, uh, an analog impression and poured that up in stone, uh, what we have done is taken an optical impression so I can actually design the virtual restoration. Now I do this regardless of whether we're doing a CEREC guide or not because it allows me to understand the main objective of this procedure. And although Deb is missing a tooth, the dentist often thinks of the implant first and foremost. In reality, the patient came in because she's missing a tooth. And so we should always think about the tooth when we're designing our implant location and the process that goes into placing an implant. Because if we place the restoration as a secondary factor, it's often that implants can be placed uh, in the inappropriate location when the restoration isn't uh, in the big picture. So the philosophy has now been, and the paradigm shift is crown down planning, where the restoration is the first and primary objective for the patient. And so we should start with an ideal proposal. 
Now, traditionally, we do that using model-based wax-ups, using the traditional techniques of waxing up a model so you can understand the prosthetic vision for that patient. But the benefit of having CEREC is we can very quickly, in a matter of seconds, capture an optical impression. Now, Dr. Agarwal will also show you the benefit of having an Omnicam. Uh, in my practice, well, we chose to use the BlueCam for this process, and uh, we've actually already gone ahead and captured that optical impression.